We live in a beautiful and fascinating world. Nature can do brilliant and sometimes hard to explain things. The common man today can see spectacular cosmic anomalies and weather that can be confusing and terrifying, even to someone with access to the wealth of knowledge that is the internet. But back in the day, the ancient mariner didn't have this wealth of common knowledge. He had only his experience and hearsay. So when he saw things like St. Elmo's fire, the green flash, and Aurora Borealis, he was left to have his mind wander. Oftentimes, superstition filled the blanks that knowledge couldn't fill. Now, bear with me here. I'm going to explain some of these things to the best of my abilities and understanding, but I am not a physicist. I'm a boat driver. Cut me some slack here. Out at sea in the height of an electrical storm, a semi-common sight is a blue or purple glow on the yard arms, masts, and spars of a vessel, often in the shape of a flame. This fascinating phenomenon is known as St. Elmo's Fire. St. Elmo's Fire is named after St. Erasmus of Formia. This Christian saint from the 3rd century AD is the patron saint of sailors. So what is this hissing, buzzing blue glow? St. Elmo's Fire is a form of plasma. It develops in situations of high voltage differentials between two different gradients, such as thunderstorms at sea. During such events, electrical fields will form, and these electrical fields become more concentrated around objects with high curvature, such as sharp objects like masts and spars. Discharges form as electrons are stripped from atoms forming plasma that is both visible and audible. If that made no sense to you at all, don't worry, I don't get it either. You could have just told me invisible wizards like standing on masts, casting magic into the skies during thunderstorms, and I'd likely understand that more. Which, ironically, isn't too far off of what sailors of old thought. Since St. Elmo's fire often occurred near the tail end of storms at sea, sailors often thought it was the saint himself coming to guide the sailors to safer seas. They believed it was a sign that the saint was sailing with them, and that everything would end well. Now, if one were to travel the northern or southern latitudes, at night you might be treated with the sight of dazzling lights in the sky. Hues of greenish yellow, violet, and red dance about in wavy patterns. What we know as the northern and southern lights, or aurora borealis and aurora australis. But what are these fascinating lights? What causes them and what superstitions follow them? Well, in truth, modern science has no idea what causes these lights. Yep, total mystery. Alright, fine, I was just trying to avoid another lengthy science lesson. In truth, the aurora borealis and aurora australis are caused by particles spewed out from our sun during solar storms. These rapidly traveling particles bombard the atmosphere of our planet, getting trapped in the planet's magnetic field centralized around the poles. As these particles collide with the molecules of our atmosphere, they heat up and excite the nitrogen and oxygen particles that make up our atmosphere and cause them to glow. More or less. Again, disclaimer, boat driver, not a physicist. The superstitions behind the auroras are numerous and varied because if I, a modern man, struggle to understand particles exciting oxygen molecules in our ionosphere, how is ancient man supposed to explain it? But it varies. Some, like the Vikings, saw it as a good omen, thinking it the reflection of the armors of Valkyries, carrying the souls of dead warriors across the Bifrost Bridge to Valhalla. The Finnish thought it was mythical firefoxes sprinting across the tops of mountains so fast that they kick up sparks and snow and then are reflected by the moon. But the native Sami thought the aurora was the souls of the dead and should never be spoken about. In fact, to wave, whistle to, or even speak about the northern lights would cause them to take notice of you, lifting you up into the sky or even reaching down and cutting off your head. In North America, the native Cree and Eskimos both thought the aurora borealis was a way to speak with their dead ancestors. While the Algonquin believed it was a fire built by their creator of the world, Nana Bozo, who, once he finished his work, went off to live in the north. He built the fire to remind his people that he is still there and remembers them. But the Fox Indians thought it was the souls of their slain foes returning to exact revenge, while the Great Plains Indians even thought it was just the reflection of northern war parties coming south to attack them. When the Aurora Borealis was particularly intense, it would stretch farther south into Europe. 
Often it was a portent of death or war. In the late 18th century, a few weeks before the Great French Revolution, it was reported that as far south as Scotland or England they could see the lights and said they heard the sounds of war coming from the sky. But for sailors, there was less superstition. The Danish saying it was caused when whales played, while the Swedish believed it to be the reflections of massive schools of fish in the night sky, an omen of a good fishing trip. The last one is less well known and for a long time was really only ever observed by sailors, who were often passed off as just seeing things, an after image of the sun. The green flash, or green ray, is a meteorological optical phenomenon when a green spot or a sudden ray of green light can be seen on the horizon at sunset, just after the sun sets for a moment or two before disappearing. All right, one more science-y rant. This one is quick, though. This is simply the rays of light from the sun being reflected or refracted from our atmosphere, causing the rays to split into their separate frequencies causing us to only see the green for a brief moment. Now I know what you're thinking. Ah, this one I know. Pirates used to think it was when a soul returns from the land of the dead. You know, like in pirate movie, we won't speak the name of to avoid copyright. Yes, exactly. Only, yeah, not really. In truth, there's very little mention of the green flash in folklore. The earliest being around 1832. In the morning, however, at a quarter before 10 o'clock, while standing on an ice hammock about 17 feet high and looking towards the east, I had observed the upper limb of the sun as it filled a triangular cleft on the ridge of the headland of the most brilliant emerald color, a phenomenon which I had not witnessed before in these regions. This coming from Sir George Back, narrative of an expedition in HMS Terror undertaken with a view to geographical discovery on the Arctic shores in the years 1836 to 1837. After that, Jules Verne wrote a book in 1882 called The Green Flash, in which he states there is a Scottish folk tale that states, if you see the green ray, you cannot go astray in decisions of the heart. But if that folk tale is written down somewhere, I can't find any record of it. A 1923 book of weather proverbs stated that the green flash signaled good weather, but that's it. It sort of seems like the lore given in nondescript pirate movie may just be movie magic. But there you have it. Is St. Elmo's fire a sign that a third century saint is with you on your journey? Are dancing lights in the sky souls of dead warriors? Is a green flash your buddy coming back from the dead to make more money for Disney? Probably not, but better safe than sorry. Do you know any other interesting superstitions about cosmic anomalies? Should I quit my sailing career to become an astrophysicist? Let me know in the comments, and stay tuned for more superstitions with the Superstitious Sailor. Fair winds and following seas to you, shipmates.